Hey everyone, I'm up in the mountains and I finally brought my camera when I've gone on a camping trip. So I'm pretty excited to show you guys kind of what the setup is. I'll show you guys what our tent looks like, how we use our truck, and uh, a little bit around this beautiful campsite. This is up in the Uinta Mountains in Utah in a canyon called Rock Creek Canyon. Okay guys, it's basically the last full day that we have camping, so I thought I'd show you guys the setup that we have. Um, so we're just a little bit away from the main camp area, and we're just under these two large pine trees uh, just to have some shade throughout the day because we have our baby that sleeps uh, for her naps. Now we like to have just a little setup near our tent. We have this table here. Uh, we have Katie feeding baby Jada. <laughs> yes. And Yeti trying to get some scraps. Um, so we don't have any running water at this camp site, so we do have water that we've brought and... Um, we do go fill this up at a campsite that's close on. This just, just this group site doesn't have water. So kind of a hand washing station and drinking water. And we like to keep uh, just things in totes so that the animals don't get in. So this is our food tote. And over here we have our coats. Now this, t this trip has actually been really cold. Um, the first couple of days it was down, got down in the lower 30s. We actually had ice uh, on some of the tables. So I'll talk about that. Now this is our six man tent. It looks much larger because it has this vestibule on the side here. We call it the garage. Let me just go ahead and show you what this is. Now this is a North Face tent. Uh, let me see if I can get the name here. But we absolutely love this tent. Um, I got it for really cheap off the website Steep and Cheap. I think that still exists, but it was like five or six years ago. So our little garage here. Um, we have our fridge. This is the Iceco VL60 Pro. And this whole trip, I've been running it off this FF Power P2001. And we just set it on top of a tote so you don't have to bend over. Um, let's see, we can go take a look inside here. Um, still pretty full. Uh, we do kind of share meals between the whole group. And uh, we still have one more dinner that we're kind of providing for everyone. So anyway, very awesome. Let's see if I can find the thermometer in here. I always like to bring these guys. I always recommend them. It's a warm up for me touching it. Let's see what we're sitting at. Okay, right in the refrigeration section. So great there. And I have it set to, I think it's set to 36 and it's showing 34 on the screen. Um, I absolutely love the VL60 Pro. Uh, actually, the VL Standard Series VL60, this is just the only 60 liter that I have. If we were going to be bringing more food, I would have brought the VL74, which is even a step up from this one. It's kind of hard when you're providing food for a large group. We have uh, 30 people here, so we have to bring a lot more food. And uh, I've been very happy with the FF Power P2001, guys. This thing, it's been going for four days. Three days actually and it's still sitting at 49% I have not charged this thing at all uh, there's no issues with the DC uh, output shutting off I charged my phone um, yesterday with USB-C charged up super quick and then over here I just have a tote uh, with all my kind of electronics camera goodies fun tech stuff that I like to play with I'll just give you a brief um, look inside the tent just so you can see how we sleep with a baby when we go camping. So uh, right here we have a queen mattress that is a air mattress and then we put a blanket down then two sleeping bags and then we put uh, this on top so our dog can sleep on top without getting our sleeping bags ruined. And then we have a pack and play that uh, baby Jada sleeps in. And then our two younger, our two older girls sleep in their sleeping bags here. And they have some nice thermarest mats under here. Now, like I said, that it was extremely cold this trip. We usually don't go camping in cold, but the 12-volt uh, heated blanket came to the rescue. But I needed a way to run that heated blanket. So that's why I brought some extra batteries today, or on this trip. So this is the one I would have used uh, the whole time just to run a sound machine. And that's... Basically all we do camping is a sound machine and a fan, but because the heated blanket um, was needed this time, we have this cover for the pack and play and then that kind of allows us to put blankets and insulate this whole area. And then the heated blanket creates just enough heat 
uh, we put that on the bottom and then we put a blanket over it it creates enough heat in here that she stays warm without a sleeping bag because you know babies don't really sleep in sleeping bags and that's what this top one here is this is my 100 amp hour diy battery and i just basically turn it on and it powers the heated blanket and it pulls uh 50 watts through the whole night let's see if i have the app up here because i can show you guys what it's sitting at after one night of use so you can see it's sitting at 72 percent and there's 75 amp hours left so it uses about 25 percent of the battery to run the heated blanket for i don't know 10 hours or so so you could also you could get away with running two heated blankets if you really wanted to each one pulls around 47 to 50 watts consistently non-stop so awesome i've absolutely love that we brought this. this is the only way that we could bring our baby camping when it got so cold like i said it's just a, such an unusual cold front that came through but let's go ahead and show you guys um the setup with charging my batteries okay guys so i have the truck over here in the parking lot because there's a lot less trees to block the solar charging so let me go ahead and show you what i have here so first thing i'll show you guys is I have this six gauge cable going up to my starter battery. And then off that six gauge cable, I have four Anderson power pole connections. Now what that allows me to do is I can run my fridge. I can charge a battery, um, you know, run led lights, whatever I want to do back in the cab here. Um, I have that direct connection to the battery. Now, as for solar panels, I have my solar panel coming through the window here over to my charge controller. Let me go ahead and show you my solar panel setup. So I have my solar panel coming through the window, the wiring up on the roof. Now that is the Blue Eddy SP350. I've been seeing really good power out of it. Actually right now, let's see, we're getting 14.4 amps and the battery's sitting at 13.9 volts. So we're getting around uh, 200 watts and this is early morning sun. So pretty awesome that you can just bring one solar panel, set it on the roof of your vehicle and it'll charge up your battery. So this is the 100 amp hour battery that I had in the tent. Uh, it's down to 75, 75%, so I'm charging it back up. I wanna have it ready for tonight to use the heated blanket. And what's really cool about this charger, this is a dual charger. Um, it has a solar panel input here. I can hook two solar panels in, or I can hook in DC to DC charging to charge up my battery. So say there wasn't solar, I could basically start my truck engine, hook it up to this, and I could put up to 50 amps into this battery using this charger. It's crazy how fast uh, this charger does. I do have a full video on that if you guys want to see that. But this is just the setup, very simple. Um, I like to keep it simple. Uh, I do have my XTAR SP100 just in case I need it. Didn't even have to need it this time. Okay, so the other option that you have is if you have a power station, you don't need a charge controller at all. For example, the P2001, you just set it here and you could charge it up directly uh, using this solar panel. Um, you could use extension cables. Now, the only problem I have everything charging here is because at the tent, I don't have any solar. So here I actually have solar. So I'm kind of doing a two battery setup where I have the fridge running off the power station. And then if that ever got so low, I basically take this over there and then charge up the P2001 here. Now what's interesting is the Blue Eddy SP350 sitting on the roof. We've had two rainstorms and uh, it's definitely still working. So looks like it's waterproof. And also it's heavy enough that it hasn't blown away. So been pretty impressed with the performance of that solar panel. And usually I have to lay out, you know, two or three 100 watt panels. So it is pretty nice to only have one solar panel on the roof. Uh, so anyway, Hopefully you guys find that helpful. Just a little overview of what I like to do when I go camping. Now, one reason why we love this camp is because I have this river that's right next to camp. So you get the ambient water noise as the water goes over the rocks. And also the kids can play and swim in the river if it's warm enough. And then in the background, you have these beautiful mountains. Okay guys, just want to take a second to check out Jeff's setup, the battery on his truck and solar panels and things like that. So we'll have him just explain what's going on. Uh, Jason, this is the 
the battery to my truck. It's a DECA Intimidator. It's a combination starter battery, uh, AGM battery. I like it so I can deep cycle if I need to without wearing out a regular battery. It's a little more money, but works out pretty good. Some of the power connections that I have on this is, is I have a, a really heavy wire. It's, uh, it's, this, is, this is the truck. Uh, but this, this one goes all the way to the back of my camper shell and it is four gauge uh, wire. And I also take ground all the way to the back too, even though I could use the chassis as a ground. Four gauge there. Um, I've got my stereo and I got another eight gauge wire going to a 300 watt inverter that I have underneath the front seat. Then just a, a connection right here for uh, charging my battery. It's SAE. I, uh, a lot of my chargers and battery tenders and that kind of thing have SAE so this allows me just when I park the truck for a long time without use I can just keep the battery topped off. Um, being that this is a crew cab I like to keep the um, refrigerator it's Ice Co VL 74 keep it in the in the back it's big this is a very big fridge yeah I, I like it. it doesn't draw that much more power so find that one big fridge is less power than two small fridges Anderson uh, power pole straight to the fridge I cut off the um, cigarette lighter plug I don't like those um, and I have the power that was that comes to my 300 watt inverter I, I pigtail off of a an Anderson uh, 50 amp connector right here this allows me to uh, run a, a like a Kase DMT 1250 if I have like a, a, a separate battery a lithium iron phosphate battery here and run this fridge but I am finding right now that I am have plenty of solar power and I'm able to just run off my truck battery uh, plenty well and the fact that my wiring yeah, this is 12 gauge here is my wiring's not coming through the like the cigarette plug oh yeah right there I, I don't know what the factory does but it's probably like 16 gauge I lose almost a volt by when, when this is drawing current whereas with my own custom wiring I don't lose as much power yeah. in the wiring that's that's helping helping out a lot it's kind of nice to have the fridge back here in the back seat since nobody's traveling with us um, one one thing that's I think is important to mention is that when you have a, a fridge like this and you have and you're using the stock wiring you get a lot of voltage drop and sometimes the fridge won't it'll give a low battery error because of uh, voltage drop and also some of the 12 volt sockets on vehicles lose power when you turn the key off so there's two issues if you use the stock wiring so yeah and I have the fridge set to the low voltage uh, trip point and uh, that just means the fridge is going to run your battery down uh, lower but I'm not worried about that because I track the the battery voltage I just keep something plugged into my uh, a cigarette lighter here it just tells me what my battery voltage is at all times and and I'm just aware of where my starter battery is so I never run it down to the point where I can't start my truck. Yep, always got to be aware of what your battery is, especially if it's your starter battery. So if you don't want to deal with custom wiring and things like that, sometimes it's more simple to go with a secondary battery that's completely separate. Yes, yeah. And I brought one along, I just haven't felt the need I need to use it. Yeah, so let's go, let's go sure. look at that and then maybe we'll look at your solar panels. Okay, this is the... Uh, the battery, the lithium iron phosphate battery that Jason was talking about. This one here is a 100 amp hour battery. Now this is Jeff's iteration. He has a custom display, which is really cool. Um, this uses the battery hookup cells. So 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. So you can see each of the uh, modules voltages, the temperature, state of charge, and the, temp and, uh, the voltage right here at the top of the whole battery. You'll notice that I don't even have a cigarette lighter plug here, four Anderson power poles. And if I need to charge this with a high current, I'll just par parallel up with uh, two of those. And I, if I have a, anything that's cigarette lighter plug, I just make an adapter that goes in. Yeah. There. 
these battery hookup modules have been super awesome. They, they go out of stock really fast if you're looking to build one. So this is just kind of backup battery for me. Yeah. Over here, this was the, uh, the cable that came from my battery. It ran underneath and then up through here. It's, this is uh, that four gauge wire, uh, welding wire. And I've got a connector here and it goes over to uh, this thing right here which has got a cigarette lighter plug and then two Anderson power poles over there. And then I've got two Anderson power pole, the 20 amp type, with a cable right here. And this is so that I can keep things plugged in here and I can run a charger here so I can get a lot of current from my alternator when the, when the batteries run. And that way I could charge this guy up 30 amps. I actually have two XTAR solar panels just up on the roof. So they're not they're not directly pointed at the sun, but they're adequate. Pretty clear right now. Well, let's talk about both the charge controllers you have. You have two of them, right? The, the very first uh, solar charge controller that I got were these uh, Blue Sky uh, 1524 IX. I actually came across a bunch of these uh, from a, somebody that was selling them a project that they canceled and so I picked these up pretty cheap. Uh, Jason and I put them on an aluminum panel. They they actually are are a panel mount charge controller and so they're open face. They're not in a box. So uh, Jason and I ended up getting these cases from uh, Harbor Freight <laughs> and uh, got the uh, eighth inch aluminum panel machined uh, and also for a, a display volts and amps. Let me plug it in so it gets its power from the battery which I'm uh, coming off of my truck battery here. This is a 10 gauge. Both oh, uh, yeah. solar panels hooked on. I've got the uh, this thing programmed 14.4 volts so it's gonna it's gonna stop out at 14.4 and then this current's gonna start dropping down uh, we're looking at battery uh, voltage and current solar panel 18.6 uh, and a little bit uh, lower uh, current because power in basically is power out on a MPPT type charge controller we went ahead and made our own uh, instrumentation as far as uh, uh, voltage and current uh, and if I need to program this thing by the way uh, you program it with a, a device that uh, Blue Sky sells and this allows me to put this thing into program mode and connect up a, a small connector right there to my device that programs this I can go in and change the program but I, I, I just leave it for the most part leave it set where it's on AGM mode which is close enough to uh, lithium batteries that I don't worry about it but I love this thing um, it's so small and portable I think probably the reason I like it the most is because my background in engineering was instrumentation engineering and I had to design circuits that were very accurate in testing equipment and so I got I got two shunts in here one for the solar and and one for the battery and uh, and then I've got some instrumentation amplifiers in there and so these are this is very accurate uh, uh, development it's also two decimal places yeah which yeah. you don't get that a lot no and it's all been calibrated I, just, I only do it because I can and, <laughs> and it makes it fun well, it's your hobby so yeah it is but well this I think this does up to 20 amps so that's quite a bit of power yeah so. that's the nice thing about uh, having Sun on your camping trip is that I haven't really felt like I had to use this yet and it's just more convenient for me personally since I already have all the wiring built into the the vehicle uh, just to plug it in right here and then I don't have to worry about this it's kind of backup setup for me right now in case it was cloudy and stormy the whole trip maybe we could talk briefly about the setup behind you this is your son's truck so he's using um, the Sun Power Flex 50s and there's four of them so 200 watts of solar and then he's also running off his truck battery 
Uh, but he has plenty of solar and just using this Epever charge controller. These are budget and they'll do lithium and AGM. So this is kind of my recommendation for a budget lithium charger. Yes, yeah, if, if you don't have the capability to build your own. Yep. His uh, truck battery is a standard battery that we get at, get at Walmart, Everstar or whatever they are. But it's, mm -hmm. not a, it's not like the battery that I had in mine. It's, it's part AGM starter, just a standard starter battery. So you gotta keep your eye on it a little bit more. Yeah. Yep, and you always gotta fight the trees uh, when you're, you know, it's, it's kind of a bittersweet thing because you love the shade because of the cool, but they also get in the way of your solar panels, so. This is my old truck, by the way. Yep. Uh, and he bought it from me. I had one power connection on the back and it's a cigarette lighter plug and it's 12 gauge wiring. So he loses a little bit of power all the way to the back here. This is the new air 80 quart dual fridge. It's a monster, it's a big fridge. But yeah, he has uh, one side set to freezer and one side set to fridge. So that's the benefit. I think last night we had uh, peach cobbler and ice cream because he had the ice cream in here, which was pretty cool. So yeah, he's consuming a lot more power than I am on that uh, VL74, that Iceco VL74. So got my Iceco hat on. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> then we got this other one. It's kind of a little bit bigger, a little beastier. And uh, it's my custom made deal you may have seen this from uh, one of jason's other uh, chargers it's a a Kase dc to dc charger with solar capability and and I, i've got a little bit crazy with the wiring in here because uh, i've got this uh, instrument panel right here that uh, i showed a bunch of different voltages uh we can switch between here in fact let's power this yeah up. let's power it up so the way these chargers work is they get their power uh, from the uh, the battery, they don't get their power from to run their internal electronics. They get that from the battery, and uh, so we'll we'll just plug these uh, solar uh, connections in here. And I've got Anderson power pull on those. Now, one thing that I was a little concerned about putting this uh, unit down inside this box is the ventilation, and so I have a, a fan right there. Yes, yeah, fan can of the see back. That. And it draws air out, and then we've got a vent over here. I'm just sucking that heat that comes off of this guy right on out. But he's temperature controlled. That's another thing that I, I, I do some things that you normally people wouldn't do just because that's my, that's my job as an instrumentation engineer. And so I, I just make a hobby out of it. Um, DC in voltage, zero. Solar voltage 19.3 and the inside temperature of this box 89 degrees 89.7 this charger is a dual charger in one so you can actually dc input from your alternator to charge your battery or solar panels depending on if there's you know no sun available you can still charge your battery again i don't know if i would uh, go to this much work other than i had this uh, control panel from another project uh, but I did like what Jason did with his Kase. He, uh, he just mounted it into a, a box very similar in size to that and, and just put the connections on that. A lot more simple. Uh, this is my uh, portable uh, camp shower. You and I made one uh, a year ago. And uh, I keep it all in this five gallon bucket I've heated up some some water on the stove just to take the chill off of the get some cold water put that in so we got our uh, intake made it so they take it apart that goes in on the side here then here is the key to the whole thing. Put it in this case. It is a, yeah, it's a 12 volt on demand pump. So only when water is being requested does this thing turn on. So we've got an in, we've got an out to the shower. So in, of course, is going to be right here. 
shower hose. I put these caps on just to keep water from leaking out that was left in it from last time I used it. Say it's pretty dry in here. Okay. No, this is a uh, kitchen faucet yeah. sprayer. Yeah, let's uh, let's take it over to the shower tent. So we have a small five amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery to run this guy. I actually have a a circuit that I made in here. I found that this surge current on this guy would kick the BMS off. So I I put a a filter in here to to limit that I know that's kind of beyond what most people are going to want to do but it makes it work really really good and then I I just hook it up together I keep it off there's the switch right there I guess it was on so let's uh let's turn it on it's gonna prime this I'm gonna go open up the uh the valve Lots of pressure. So you basically have the, the hose going up through the top of the tent and then down, kind of like a actual shower. Yes, yeah, so person standing in here can uh, spray. And then you're not wasting water when, you're, uh, when you are shut it off. This water is on kind of a, it's on a hill right here. So it's just gonna drain off. I've got a, another tarp right here just to put your clean clothes. Yeah. Actually, that, that tarp came with the tent. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, Jeff, what kind of got you into the solar panels and batteries and things like that? Well, it has to do with uh, having an electric uh, portable refrigerator. Uh, once I discovered those a long time ago, they were expensive, you know, because there wasn't a lot of choice. But uh, then there, it became the need to keep your, uh, your battery charged up. Now, when you're on a road trip, no problem. Uh, you don't consume enough power overnight to run your battery down. But when you're doing a camping like what we're doing here for four days, um, and we're not driving anywhere, you can run your battery down in about after 24 hours or so if you aren't replenishing it. So then I thought, hey, uh, solar, that's that's the thing that's up and coming. And let's uh, let's put some solar panels on this. And then later on, you came in, we came into the lithium iron phosphate batteries and those uh, uh, are a great source of uh, power too. And uh, so it's a combination of, of those and then I wired my truck to be a, this is my RV, you might say. Yep. It's, it's, my, it's my camping vehicle, I don't, I have a car. So we camp out of this a lot and got all the power connections in the back here. Um, we even have a TV stand back here. Yep. <laughs> it's right over here. And you just decided to run an AC, a small, efficient AC TV off an inverter, right? Yeah, it's a 24 inch TV with a DVD uh, slot on the side. Uh, I measured the power on that. I think it's um, 40 or 50 watts. So could, we could power that with, uh, with a, uh, with a bi-bean uh, or one of these uh, AC, uh, these power stations that come with, uh, comes with an AC port. Yep. But, um, so this is our camping vehicle, and um, it, the uh, the solar uh, and power and batteries at all just kind of fit together with wanting to have a 12 volt uh, electric fridge. And the electric fridges have been around longer than the solar power. So uh, once solar power matured uh, and lithium iron phosphate batteries matured, uh, then everything just fits together really nicely. Now you, you can really do some some neat stuff uh, camping now. Maybe the last thing here is, what's the main benefit of a fridge for maybe someone that hasn't used a fridge before? Why would you use a fridge over a ice chest? Oh, well, because uh, you don't ever have to worry about the temperature in there. It's You can set the temperature to 35 to 40 degrees or whatever you want to set it at, and it will maintain it just like your fridge in, in your kitchen. Uh, and you don't have to worry about ice. No soggy food? No, yeah, and if, if you had to throw a a 10 pound bag or a 10 pound block of ice in a, a 50 quart fridge you're taking up all that extra space so uh, just the electric fridge is, is is really what drove me into all this other stuff and uh, 
it just and then you a, got me into it <laughs> yeah and it just it's just been a lot of fun uh, a couple years ago we got into the isco uh, fridges once uh, they became very reasonable price you didn't have to be buying an angle that was eight or nine hundred dollars yep uh, it just became a lot of fun awesome well thank you so okay. much jeff for showing your setup appreciate you being open to kind of give your advice to everyone watching the channel and uh, they've always they loved your uh, 12 volt compressor fridge comparison video a while back so I thought it'd be really cool to show you what you know his actual setup is so anyway thank you so much you bet